Hello again, I am Jim Bob and welcome to another F1 Manager video. Tonight we are back with Williams for round 11 of our third season. We are dominating both championships right now and I see no reason why that isn't going to continue for the next you know, multiple races. I think we're in a very, very strong position right now. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a, a battle between our two teammates for the title, I think. Pierre, the defending champion, is trailing his teammate George Russell at the moment by 19 points. Uh, he is uh, trying to close the gap, but it's you know, Russell got the win at Silverstone last time out and uh, just stabilised that gap a little bit after a couple of back-to-back -back wins for Pierre, uh, recovering after a slow start to the season. So it's going to be an interesting uh, fight for the title between these two. Uh, nobody else really in the picture at the moment, but it's an almighty scrap between the remaining drivers and teams uh, for best of the rest. As you can see uh, Sainz, Leclerc, Bottas, Verstappen all in a very, very close fight for third place at the moment. And it's the same with teams as well. To a degree, Ferrari have got an edge over Red Bull. Uh, and despite some of the point gaps that you see there, the performance of the teams is pretty close. There's uh, not a huge gap in terms of uh, overall performance, in terms of lap time difference between the teams at the moment. Uh, they are lapping very, very close together. Qualifying is normally separated by just a few tenths of a second rather than a second, second and a half. So... It's, it's going to be a really interesting second half of the season, depending on how development goes with the rest of the field. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. Uh, evening, Farah, Anthony, Mr. Water. Good to see you guys. Uh, congratulations on your uh, championships, Anthony. Four seasons and now double world champions with Aston Martin. Very nice indeed. Right, uh, let's see. We've got four days to go until uh, the Grand Prix. We've got no parts coming up for this one, I don't believe. Let's double check. Uh, no, we've got uh, side pods in 18 days and then uh, we've got 49 and 52 days for the next two parts. So uh, the front wing and the other floor are going to be dropped in time for Spa. Uh, the side pods, possibly Montreal. Not Montreal, sorry. Paul Ricard. Possibly. Let's check the calendar. Uh, yes, there you go. They'll drop on the day of practice for the French Grand Prix. Uh, so we'll have our new side pods there. Uh, have we got any points to allocate out? Uh, nope. And nope. Okay. Uh, facility wise, I think we're doing all we need to do or all we can do. Yeah, everything is uh, being upgraded or is fine. So, let's push on. Uh, so, uh, let's do our race prep. Performance targets. Um, we're going to go for uh, both cars in Q3 and both in Q2. They're both going to be easy targets. The incentive is to try and get a 1-2 in quali. Ooh, a bit of a gurgle from my stomach there, excuse me. Uh, fastest lap is the incentive. We should be able to get that. Uh, finish position, we are going to go for the 1-2 as a finish as well. And then the streaks, uh, we've got a new finish position streak, two in the top four for two races. That's a rubbish streak. Uh, and then uh, we are nearly halfway through our quali streak, which is two in the top four for five races. Uh, in terms of the circuit info, uh, there is the layout of the track. So you can see uh, we've got the three DRS zones back to back. The main straight, then uh, the second long straight going up the hill to the tight hairpin. And then the uh, the third DRS straight as we go down to uh, turn four, where the track uh, banks round to the right and drops away going into the uh, the second sector there. Uh, a lot of high-speed stuff in the second half. Uh, some slow and medium stuff in the first half of the lap. In terms of where our car sits, 
you can see um, not the not the best in terms of straight line speed our top speed is lacking a little bit but we are very very good in acceleration very very good in the corners lacking a little bit now in the low speed uh, the way we've been working the car to try and improve uh, our, our our performance has meant that we've lost a little bit of our low speed performance but we have gained in medium and high speed as you can see uh, and massively gained in the drs as well we now have one of the very best drs's on the grid which is nice brakes and engines are being worked on uh, the new front wing that's coming for Spa will help improve the brake cooling. The new side pods for the next Grand Prix at Manucor will also help improve our engine cooling a little bit as well. The battle is surely going to rage this weekend. Welcome to the Green Hills of Austria. The Red Bull Ring hosted its first Grand Prix in 2014, and it's been spectacular ever since. The Red Bull Ring is one hungry beast of a power track. Drivers face a steep climb up to turn three and a fast ride downhill through wide corners and straights thereafter. There's plenty of opportunity to overtake here, especially with the help of three DRS zones. The season is about halfway through, and it makes me wonder, what else is in store for the teams? Well, there's only one way to find out. There's nothing like a race weekend in Formula One. Okay, we've got potential wet racing. Uh, we've got uh, light rain for practice one or two or both. Heavy rain on Saturday and then light rain on Sunday. This is going to be a wet weekend. This is going to be a fun one. It's going to be unpredictable. We like unpredictability. Makes it a bit more exciting. Uh, we're going to drop uh, George out of the car for Ollie this session. Uh, let's go ahead and swap out some parts. So we want to uh, change those engines. Put in our worn engines for practice. There we go, and let's do the same for our gearboxes as well. And we're still on our first ERS unit, I believe. Yeah, still on the first ERS unit for both cars. Although we might have to change um, the ERS for uh, Gasly because he is now very close to the 40% where it'll start dipping. Right, uh, car setups, let's take a look at the sliders. Okay, so we're looking at a very low rear wing on this car, potentially, and on this one, a bit more balanced. A bit lower on the front, a bit higher on the rear, maybe. Uh, so, let's start with Gasly's car. Let's go with uh, a 4.5. That's going to be a 4.5 on both cars, I think. Uh, so 4.5 and a 13. Uh, a 1.9. There we go. Uh, we'll go with a 3.25. And then we'll go with a 1. On this car and we're going to do essentially the same setup on the other car except the uh, the tow will be a little uh, a little less it'll be 0.85 on the other car we're going to put 23 laps of fuel in because it is a very fast uh, lap just a little over 60 seconds uh, so 4.5 13 a 1 9 uh, 3.25 and a 0.85 on this car so they are my two 13 setups. Let's see if either of those are correct. Uh, run plan again, we're going to go 23 laps of fuel. And drop the pace. And we are ready to go to practice. Let's see what the weather does. Ready to check. Okay, so no rain in this session. 
Have I ever had the bonus components option ever? Um, what do you mean, an increase in allocation um, as a regulation change? No. No, I've never had that. Right, let's whiz through practice as quick as we can, because next session is going to be a bit more unpredictable. We're going to have some, some rain in that session. Uh, who, who knows at this stage whether it's going to be a wet practice three or quali or both. Uh, we've got heavy rain forecast for Saturday and then rain on the race itself as well. Oh, Hauger's running. So we actually have we can take a, look now. a reserve now, driver on the, the track at the moment. Here. Dennis Hauger for Mercedes, and he bins car. it. What a disaster. Are there any others running? Sounds like a spin. Mm. Nope, just Hauger and and uh, and Behrman. Hold the balance, please. Very very nice job. Okay, eighty-seven percent. That's that. not bad. Eighty-six percent for Ollie's car. That's not bad. Also, let's see what we can change. Uh, oh, a lot needs to change. Okay, so the cornering is way off. Uh, as is the braking stability, but I don't know which way that needs to go. Uh, that will give us just about everything we need for traction and the oversteer, but the straights aren't going to change, so we're going to need to tweak the straights. So I'm going to put the straights that way. I'm going to pull that back to there. And push that out a little bit more. And let's... Let's try that. Actually, let's pull that back that way. Nope, that's going the wrong way there, isn't it? This is the uh, the fun part of the puzzle. Trying to figure out which way things need to move. Let's try this. See if this works. I keep forgetting whenever I'm running Ollie, I don't need to run him for the full 23 laps or the full stint. We just need to get him to the point where he gets feedback on the car. Get him in, get him out. As soon as he gets feedback, pull him in and that's him done. Because that'll be his 500 points accrued. And anything else is just unnecessary mileage on the car. Because he's not gaining anything else. and Unless the car is in a completely green state where we don't really have much knowledge of it at all we need to really gain knowledge on the parts staying out it's just a waste uh, of, of wear on the engine and gearbox etc okay so the rear wing is off on this one so 13.5 then it's gonna be a five on the front wing let's push that to there Nope, let's go 5.5, .5. pull that back in, just a little correction that way, I like the look of that, let's give that a go. Oh, 
God, did someone run wide there? All right, feedback is close for, for Bearman. There we go. Uh, 94. So it's an improvement, but it's still not quite there yet. We'll get a clearer picture of what we need to do to change the uh, change the setup. Okay, so the front wing needs to go that way. So we can get a little bit more gap on the straights and then we can correct the uh, the braking and traction etc with some camber and then we can correct some toe there we go so we got a little bit of a change on the cornering a little bit of a change on the straights and a small change on the oversteer that might be it We'll find out in the next session. You started Car Mechanics Sim today. Which one? The uh, the first one or um, the uh, 2021 version? Because I played the first one, Platinum that one. Um, it was it was fun for a while, uh, and then it just got very grindy. Going for the last of the trophies. Um, to the point where I just didn't really have much interest in, uh, in, in getting the sequel or any of the DLCs for that matter. Once you've uh, got to the point where you've uh, built multiple engines from scratch, it's just, yeah. Or at least that's how it was for me anyway. Oh, 99 for Gassy, so we almost nailed it. Uh, we just need to click the toe once and then we'll be there. Okay, copy that. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward platinum. Uh, it's just a little time consuming uh, for a couple of the trophies. The auction one in particular, I think. is the one that's going to take you a long time you know we're selling uh i think that's it buying or selling i think it's, it's either buying or selling a hundred cars that one takes a while Fail it Okay, so changes are made. We're going to get wet weather in this session, which is a problem. For getting Russell his track knowledge but we'll persevere as best we can uh, we're gonna put um, 45 laps of fuel in the car but that's gonna be too much so I'm just gonna take five laps out because it depends when the rain's gonna fall uh, we'll probably need to change that once the rain does start to come in anyway uh, as for Pierre, he isn't going to need a particularly long run. Uh, 30 laps should be enough. Uh, 
and let's uh, see what happens with the weather. Radio check. Radio check. Okay, the rain's going to start almost immediately. Okay. Uh, so, rather than going out and then coming straight back in again, we're just going to sit and wait for the uh, the weather. Let's change the tyres now. Let's just send them out now. Gonna absolutely melt these enters for the next few laps. Oh, maybe not that long. Okay, we're it's starting to rain already. And that will definitely improve the temperatures. There you can see, back into the yellows as opposed to the reds now. And let's see what happens with the rain. Let's see if it does the weird thing where it just keeps getting wetter and wetter even though it stopped raining 20 minutes previously. That is absolutely something they need to fix in the next game. Okay, so if you... Uh, my best wins in a season is uh, 21 out of 22. And that was um, that sounds like someone's gone wide there. the 2023 season with Mercedes. Uh, Hamilton won 20 races. Schumacher won one. I can't remember who won the the, uh, the other race. Balance update when you can. Balance update. 97% uh, that is pretty good needs a little tweak and that is going to take a while until we get to that point We're causing a big traffic jam which makes me nervous that someone's going to lock up and take us out uh, 97 we went the wrong way on Gasly's car so that's going to need to be corrected uh, setting a thousand car yeah that is yeah yeah, I remember that trophy took me an eternity. Because you can buy the cars cheap at an auction and then sell them, but you know you can only store so many cars in your garage, and you've got parking spaces that you can transfer them into. But it's just it's so slow and ponderous, moving cars from one place to another. Um, yeah, it gets. Yeah, really, really grindy. Okay, so track is now dry. But, you know, I don't trust this game. <laughs> We've been uh, we've been lied to by the weather systems before, so I'm just going to leave them for a few more laps. Okay, yeah, it looks like it is definitely drying up. So let's call both of them in. So the front wing needs to change. It's got to go that way. means that's got to go that way. Uh, 
Yeah, let's go there. Let's change the tires. Let's go mediums. Uh, let's drop a huge chunk of fuel out. We're going to have 23 minutes or so left. So let's go with 22 laps of fuel. So we went the wrong oh. we went the wrong way with our toe setup so we need to click that back and then go the other way there we go uh, and let's change those tires and we'll also drop a bit of fuel out of this car as well just going to do 15 laps don't want to overrun uh, with Gasly She's going to need to do some running in the next session as well. Someone's run wide. How's home life now? <laughs> quiet. <laughs> Very quiet. I was actually uh, talking with one of my housemates earlier this morning. Um, when I went down to check them out and he was in the kitchen. Just We both commented on how quiet the house is now. It's very nice. Let me give you an example of just how ridiculous situ the situation was. So the weekend he moved out, uh, on the Saturday, was this the weekend he moved, no this was the weekend before he moved out, this is the weekend we thought that he moved out and then he went away and, and worked away for the week and came back for the weekend and then uh, he went on the Sunday of that weekend. So the week before that, when we were th we thought he was going on that Monday morning. Sunday morning, Sunday late morning, around midday kind of time, housemate directly below him came up, knocked on his door. Gee, it might have been early afternoon, but came up, knocked on his door and said that he had a leak because the guy opposite me, who's now gone, but the room opposite me has an ensuite bathroom. So he came upstairs and he knocked on the door and said, yeah, water's coming down the wall is there something you know you know is there a leak going on something you know overflowing in here it got really shouty um he uh yellow flag, yellow flag. Coming. he got really aggressive with uh with my other housemate and then uh he uh yelled an insult and uh, and slammed his door in his face and as um, and as he started to walk down the stairs to go back he muttered an insult back and, uh, and the door immediately flew open well I heard you say blah, 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 and it just he, he kicked off and um, JP my housemate downstairs uh, he's epileptic and uh, he has seizures on a pretty regular basis uh, and when he gets stressed uh, it triggers more seizures and uh, the guy who's moved out knew this. And he's been causing all sorts of issues with noise and general arsehole behaviour, as you know. So anyway, big slanging match, makes a threat, you know, makes a threat or two, you know, uh, slams his door again, and then proceeds to spend the next several hours jumping up and down on the floor slamming things into the floor as hard as he can whole house is shaking at this point just to annoy JP just to try and trigger a fucking seizure that's how pathetic and pedantic and petty and vindictive and sadistic this guy was you know he, he's borderline schizophrenic 
I think. You know, he's just a complete and utter psychopath when he gets angry. And, and it doesn't take much to get him angry when he gets a drink. And he likes to drink. Uh, <laughs> he's an alcoholic. So, yeah. Fun. So he spent hours just jumping up and down on the floor, making as much noise as possible just to try and trigger a seizure for JP. That's the kind of guy that we lived with. You know, and that's the kind of crap that we've had to put up with since November. You know, uh, threats through the wall, shouts through the wall, loud music blasted out at all hours of the day and night. You know, through to like 3, 4 in the morning sometimes, you know. You know, slamming doors, yelling insults at us as he walks, you know, past our doors. Ridiculous. He's gone, it's quiet, it's lovely. You know, the stress is melting away. Um, was he turfed out? Well, we don't actually know uh, whether he was asked to leave or whether he left by his own volition. Um, because the agency never told us. We asked and they wouldn't tell us. We had to get the police involved. Um, and we still don't know if that triggered anything because they just wouldn't tell us. So, yeah, three occasions, three separate occasions, we, we uh, had to report him to the police. And uh, whether or not that contributed to him going or not, we just don't know. But, uh, yeah, he's gone. He went last weekend. Um, not this weekend, just gone with the week before. So he's been gone a week. And it's been really quiet since okay, he's gone. And it's been lovely. It's been so nice. It's a good session all in all, I think. Still learned a lot. We return. The whole thing started over the most innocuous thing as well. It, it really was the most ridiculous thing. Because um, he'd been sober for what, 18 months or whatever it was until last summer. And then he started drinking in the summer. Apparently he was having some uh, problems with his brother. And um, so he started drinking a bit through the summer and it wasn't too bad but he would get a little boisterous every now and again he'd get a little loud with music and it wasn't horrendous you know we kind of you know uh, we li we put up with it it wasn't that often and it wasn't too bad and and to be honest half the times I kind of liked half the music he was playing anyway so you know it wasn't so much of a problem in that respect but it started to get a bit more frequent and it started to get a bit more um yeah, it started to get a bit, you know, um, more problematic. And, and then one weekend in November, beginning of November, he knocks on my door several times uh, throughout the evening. And I've not been very well. I'm trying to sleep. And every time he knocks on my door, he wakes me up. And after like the third or fourth time he knocks on my door, me coming open, uh, opening the door and talking to him for a few minutes while he's absolutely steaming drunk. And I just say, look, can you? not knock on my door tonight anymore I'm, I'm trying to sleep he snapped you know it's like I'd personally insulted him or you know slighted him because I, I wouldn't talk to him for whatever reason and from that point onwards he has been nothing but hostile he was nothing but hostile to me and um, yeah it was that one moment that just triggered you know months and months of hostility and threats you know and noise and yeah uh, yeah i'm just so glad it's all over and radio check yeah all good okay so we've got heavy rain coming i do need to get some time on track with these hard tires just to make sure that they get chosen Uh, why 
why is that? Oh, let me. There we go. So yeah, uh, some of the times that I said I wasn't feeling too well, um, so I wouldn't be streaming, just because he was stressing me out. Um, some of the times I was tired, too tired to stream, was because he kept me up, you know, um, you know, all night with uh, loud music. Um, I, I ended up, at, for the most part, whenever he started kicking off, I would just put headphones on, you know, little in the ear uh, headphones plug him into my phone, put on an audio book and just fall asleep. And I would sleep through the afternoons while he was uh, drinking and being an ass. And then uh, when he finally sort of quiet, started quieting down at like one or two in the morning was when I would see up and uh, just, you know, doing a little bit of gaming or, or whatever, you know, uh, with my headphones on. And so I'd do that through till the early hours of the morning. Sometimes through till maybe midday and then I'd end up sleeping in the afternoons. And So yeah, I mean he completely screwed up my body clock because I was just trying to drown him out. Um, yeah, it wasn't fun. There we go, Gasly is now at 100%, so we just need to make sure he gets enough track time now. Uh, George should be 100%, I hope. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get him enough track time to get him up to 100. But the car is at 100, uh, so as long as we can get him up to about 85, 90, that should be enough, maybe. Uh, here comes the rain. We are going to get uh, a lot of rain. So it's a case of bringing them in for wets, I think. And then leaving them out for the rest of the session on those wets. Okay, so we don't have the front wing feedback yet. Yeah, in the box. Okay, thank you, dear. Yeah, I, I don't want to waste any more breath on him. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. That's all that matters. Things are back to normal. Alright, some wet tyres for Gasly as well. It's not quite wet enough yet for the full wets, but uh, it will be soon. And there we go. That's full wet weather. So finally Russell out on track. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. Finally Russell out on track for the rest of the session. We'll get him up to about 90-ish percent. 90-95, somewhere in that region, I think. Uh, car is 100%. Uh, car knowledge is 100%. So uh, if we can get him up to 90, that should be enough. Maybe even 88, 89 will be enough. Um, to get in the full 15 out of 15 bonus. Uh, obviously, if there's an accident um, or he spins and has to sit and wait for other cars to go through before he can get going again, that's going to reset his uh, um, track acclimatization curve, and that will mean he won't hit uh, you know, his target. 
Uh, it's going to be fine for Gasly. He's easily going to make it. But the fact that we got the uh, heavy rain now suggests that we might not get a wet quali. We might get a dry quali and then a wet race. That'll be interesting. I think we've had a car run wide. There we go, that's Gasly done. Track is drying up, but we're going to leave George out on these full wets for the rest of the session. They are going to start melting towards the end of the session. But uh, we can't... We can't break his uh, acclimatisation curve, or else he will never get close to uh, getting his full bonus. So this is where these tyres are going to be absolutely rubbish. But we just need a little more. Oh, we got the 15 out of 15 bonus. So we could call them in now. Let's go ahead and do that. There we go. So, uh, are we going to have rain in quali? We will find out in just a moment. Good session, hold well up. We're going to be starting on dries. Let's uh, change over these car parts. So, we'll go with engine number two and gearbox number two. Let's stick with the ERS module in that car, but I might change it for Gasly. We're at 40%, so yeah, it's 1%. Well, when it gets to 39, that's that's a, a loss of performance. Um, I can afford to take that hit in a wet race. I'll save the uh, fresher ERS for, for France. We'll un unleash that one at France, I think. Um, so yeah, there we go. That's our cars set up for Quali. Yeah, we can now, we can now. Radio and time. it is going to be a dry session. Yeah. So there we go. That is enough to get us through Q1.
So, Porsche, Vettel, Sonoda, Stroll, and Joe currently at risk. Let's see who makes the cuts, who gets knocked out in Q1. Once again, uh, Ricardo's at risk. Short... He's on the bubble right now. He's got clear track in front of him, though. He should be okay. Assuming he's not running a really old engine. He improves up to 10th, so yeah, he's fine. Uh, so it's Sonoda, Stroll, Porsche, Vettel, and Stroll. No, not Stroll. Yeah, Stroll. Stroll did improve in the end, but only up to 17th. So that really strong start we saw at the beginning of the season for Aston has fallen away. Uh, they are dropping back down the order again. Uh, let's head into Q2. We're going to go with our Q1 tyres. And these should be good enough to get us through to Q3. How's the oh, we've got rain coming as well, so let's go straight out. Yep. That's green light. So we are going to have a wet, uh, a wet quali, and let's see if that weather catches out any of the uh, the top teams. Ricardo and Science going out, they could well be safe. There's that minor ERS damage for Gasly, so that will be a slight acceleration penalty for him now. He's still quick though. So yeah, Sainz and Ricardo should get a, uh, a dry lap in. Everyone else is kind of screwed. Copy that. We have more rain coming. We have more rain in the pit lane now. More rain. Okay. So Alonso, Verstappen, Vashore all heading out now. Bottas on his way out. Uh, those yep. guys are going to have a horrible time. Alonso manages to get a time in, so he is definitely through. Anyone who is trying to set a lap now is going to struggle to get through. Verstappen is on his out is on his hot lap now. So maybe on a set of inters he might be able to pip Schumacher's time there, but as things stand on slicks, yeah, he's not he's not in a good shape. Perez and Leclerc yet to go out. Uh what season is this? This is season three. So Leclerc's going to be out on Inters, I think. Oh, and the rain's picking up. Oh, that's another spanner in the works. Leclerc is going out at this point. Verstappen is going to go out. Bottas is going to go out, Vashor and Perez are all going to go out, unless that track dries up, like, right now. I think everyone's going to go out in full wets. I don't know, are they going to go full wets or are they going to go inters? They've got to go full wets. Edwin Packins.
staying awake for the duration with my voice is not happening. Are oh, you saying I put you to sleep? Thanks. <laughs> Much appreciated. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. All right, I'm not sure what tyres these guys are on. I don't want to use the uh, touchpad because that has frozen the game in the past. So we'll just have to see what kind of times these guys drop in. If they're on inters, it's a little bit too wet for inters. If they're on full wets, they'll be in the best tyre for these conditions. But it still is not it's likely that they'll improve. How much have you missed? Uh, not too much for him. Q2. Uh, the rain came in this session, and uh, as you can see, it's called a few cars out. Leclerc is out. Perez is out. Verstappen's out, and Bottas are out. So four big scalps taken in uh, in Q2 there. Both Red Bulls, one of the Mercedes and one of the Ferraris. Let's see what happens in Q3. We're back onto dry tyres. And we will go with a brand new set of tyres. Radio check, Jeff, can you hear me? Radio check. Okay. And it's going to be a dry... Okay. A dry session. So we're going to wait till the end of the session. And given that most of our competition is out, then we are an absolute lock for for pole here. Looks like there's been a lockup. Okay, Ricardo um, scuffed his first run. I don't want to go out before the field. It's such a short lap that I don't want to trip over them. All right, there they go. I'm slightly worried that Magnussen is going to get in the way. I'm also now slightly worried I might not actually make it. <coughs> Have I left this too long? Have I just screwed myself over royally? And <laughs> In a session where I was an absolute lock for pole position, I've left it too long to go out. I'm starting to think I might have. I'm going to take manual control because I don't trust that I've actually got enough time to get across the line. Even doing this, I don't think I've got enough time to get across the line. I think I've just screwed myself over royally here. Oh, Russell, get across. Uh, we'll get some comments when you're back in. Gasly's there. not going to get a lap in. Gasly's going to start 10th. Oh, I did screw him up. was short by one second. I know I could restart the session, but I'm not going to. I don't like to do that unless there's something wrong. You know, something goes wrong, you know, in terms of 
the car refuses to pit for whatever reason and then just runs out of fuel halfway around on another cooldown lap or um, you know the session breaks and that's the only time I'll, like, I'll, I'll restart the session so first and tenth uh, we've broken our sponsorship uh, both for the race and the streak that's not good Gas is going to have to fight his way through, but it's a wet race. Anything can happen. It will give us a bit of separation between our two drivers, so theoretically we can pit them both on the same lap without them tripping over each other in the pit lane. Uh, we should still be able to come through and, and get a nice one-two finish. Uh, let's see. Strategy-wise, we want to be pitting... about lap 28 by the look of it and it's probably going to be inters and that's it so do I go softs or do I go mediums softs will give me great speed at the start and then they'll fall away a lot quicker than the mediums will there's only one second difference, according to this, between the two compounds. One's going to be faster at the start, and then more con uh, the other one's going to be more consistent. I think... Softs is going to be the way to go for both cars, because Gasly's going to need that extra grip to get him through in the opening laps. And then, if he can't get far enough forward, at least he'll have enough pace to sit in the uh, in the slipstream and DRS of the cars in front of him. And if he can get past, he might be able to create a bit of a gap. Uh, I am going to take uh, one or two laps out. I'm just going to take the one lap of fuel out. Uh, we're going to go aggressive off the start in terms of battery deployment for both drivers. And we're going to be watching um, Gasly because Russell's probably just going to sprint off into the distance. That's kind of the plan. Uh, now the legitimacy of <laughs> Anthony's championship has been called into doubt. <laughs> A somewhat overcast day for the drivers who've now taken position on the grid. And here we have George Russell. They're in P1. Let's see if they can take advantage of that position. Next for the team, it's Pierre Gasly. Not as close to the front as they might have wished for, but we know the race order can change a lot during those first few corners. And we're just moments away now. The crowd are ready, the cars are ready. It's the Austrian Grand Prix. All right, I'm seeing mediums and hard. Is that a hearts on the hearts? And away we go. Wow, we're the only ones on, on softs. And only a few are on mediums. Almost everybody's on hards. Okay, that's good. Very good. So we can get a run. We should be able to uh, get multiple cars quite quickly here. And a new position just gained by Williams. This one's good. Trying to force his way up the inside. Now he's going to go around the outside. No, that's blocked as well. Ricardo doing a good job defensively here. Am I going to lap the field? No, I'm not going to lap the field. 
I'll lap some of the field, but I won't lap the whole field. Uh, let's see, Verstappen is 13th, Leclerc's 11th, Bottas 12th, no real change for those guys yet. Gasly now looking to run up the inside of Ocon. And gets him. Let's uh, kill the DRS, uh, the ERS on Russell. He's got his gap that he needed. Magnussen should be an easy target on those hard tyres. Oh, look at that, straight up the inside. Now I need to save a little bit of battery. And now we've got a run on Norris, who is way up, <laughs> way higher than he would normally be. Again, on hard tyres, so we'll get a nice traction launch out of the corner. It's going to be a little bit tricky with his having DRS as well. But we've got a very powerful DRS on our, on our rear wing. Science being held at my Albon. Albon's got ahead of him. Could be some good points in it for Albon here. And we're being blocked by Norris. getting a run here so let's uh, try and harvest okay, a little bit yeah, okay. Albon and Sainz side by side Sainz trying to go around the outside here a brave move. Can't make it stick. at the inside here. Is he going to go for the late break? Nope. With the uh, battery on harvest mode, we're not getting that punch out of the corners that we need really to force an overtake, but there isn't really any space to go anywhere at the moment. As Norris suddenly goes on the attack and Albon, having been passed by Sainz, is now under threat from Norris. He should just about hold him off. He does. Good little fight going on in front of us here. We'll do another lap or two like this, just charging up and then we'll unleash some more battery and try and punch our way through.
Russell is comfortably push, uh, pulling away at the moment. 4.3 seconds ahead. Norris is now past Albon. Surprised by that, actually. I think... Yeah, Albon's on the mediums. Norris is on the hards. I would have thought Norris would have struggled to get through, but he made that look pretty easy. See if we can go around the outside here. Yes, we can. Can we get Norris in the same corner? Oh, no. We almost had to stop completely there. So we lost a little bit of ground, but... Norris now, all of a sudden, is shaping up for a move on Sainz. And just like that, we've dropped Albon. getting through here let's see if we can uh, if we can get Norris here and we can then get a clean run on sites in the next DRS straight science goes defensive on the inside Norris trying to go around the outside here it's science who got the DRS so we're going to get Norris. Can we get Sainz as well? Can we go around the outside here? Very good job. He's having a go. And there's an there we go. Good lad, here. Pierre. And we killed the battery, so... <laughs> now we're going to see if we can actually hold that position. You're doing a good job. Science all over the back of us. He's trying to use that DRS. He's swinging from left to right. He's going to lunge up the inside. He gets the move done and he's going to have the DRS again. So we are going to drop behind him. Let's go into harvest mode. Charge it behind him. We'll have enough pace and grip to keep Norris behind us. I'm going to worry about that. We'll try and get our battery up to around about 80% again. So we'll ideally just sit behind sights for the next couple of laps and get charged up. And then make the move and try and break away from him and not bring him with us. Someone has run wide in sector three. And looks like we can have a lunge automatically here. As so Leclerc the goes wide. Okay, here's the Ferrari. Oh, very wide. wide. Very wide. That's not ideal. So both the That's Red Bulls go it. through. Bottas now all over the back of him. I oh know the Red Bulls have dropped. The Red Bulls are down at 13th and 14th, 14th and 13th and 14th. What's happened to them? We're just swapping positions back and forth for sites at the moment. So we keep focusing on the pace. Russell now six seconds ahead. Ferrari, 
Yeah, I wasn't keen on FS19 either. The lighting just it put me off. I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't get past it. The lighting killed the game for me. I think as well there were some great mods for 19 but there are a lot of mods that were really great in 17 that just weren't there in 19 mods that I, I came to almost rely on and Welcome use on such a regular basis that I felt it felt weird not having those available Just gained by Williams. So we're going to keep doing this uh, two-step tango with uh, with sights. Oh, and Ferrari just gained a place. We're about ready to try and get past him and stay past him. Science is going to block us here on the run to turn one. And he's going to block us here as well. Which actually works out quite well because now we're going to have a clean run here with DRS on this third straight and then we've got <clears throat> all the rest of sector two and all of sector three to really try and sprint as quick as we can so we can drop him with a, a, a you know going into that that sequence with a few seconds yeah, a few tenths of a second in hand just increases our chances of actually being able to break away is where it's going to be tricky we're going to keep pulling him along we need that really punchy acceleration I might actually just do this we have margin to push a bit more okay. for a lap throw on the extra tyre pace Right, six tenths of a second, that's a little more than last time. <coughs> uh, fortunately, we're almost out of battery again. And there we are, we are out of battery. Have we got enough pace left to finish the lap a, a second ahead? Just about. It's going to be really tight. We did it just. 
need to drop the pace. So now hopefully we'll have enough okay. natural pace to just eke ourselves away from him. This is always a really weird, awkward circuit to try and just, when you're just about a second, just over a second ahead, to actually try and eke that gap out because just one weird braking into turn three at the top of the hill. And the AI can suddenly close the gap from a second and a half to two or three tenths of a second. And all that hard work just gone and then you have to charge up and try and do it all over again and hopefully you can see we're now starting to eke out those extra couple of tenths a lap hopefully now we're in the clear for as long as we've got some life left in the tires so another five ten five six laps Uh, Sykes and Norris scrapping is going to help us as long as they slow each other down which they are doing at the moment Stappen has managed to jump his way up into 10th ahead of uh, Leclerc Bottas. He was running in 13th a few laps back last time I looked. Perez still down in 14th. And we are 10 laps away from 10, 11 laps away from our pit stops or our predicted pit stops for the rain. So we should start getting a wet weather warning in the next few laps. Russell absolutely on cruise control right now. fact seeing as I've got such a lead I may as well charge him back up now Copy. I would like to do the same for Gasly but that gap isn't quite big enough yet Someone. Seems to have been a lock up. Let's it's see uh, for sure. There. Now just focus on the hats. They've locked up, but that could have been much worse. Looks like he kept it out the wall. So while uh, Gansley is eking his little lead out, let's take a look at the uh, the battle here between Leclerc, Verstappen, Bottas, Schumacher, and Perez.
Not really able to make much progress on Alonso yet. But then we saw last time out at Silverstone that Magnussen was there on pace. He was up there uh, on merit. He wasn't there just, you know, as a fluke. And uh, his car's looking pretty powerful again this weekend. And I have to take a look at the uh, the Haas after the race in the uh, car comparison tool. Russell is almost fully charged. Gasly's two and a half seconds clear now, just about 2.4. Give him another couple of laps and then we'll start to look at charging him up. I'd like to get him charged up before the pit stops, yeah, if we can. Good are the workers on uh, FS22? Are they as terrible as always, or are they actually pretty decent this time out? Oh, Bottas, I think. Was that? No, it was Schumacher. Just went uh, straight on in the gravel there. Right, watch this. There's Schumacher. Well, they've lost it. They've locked up. That makes things a little bit uh, easier for Perez. Norris is still up there with uh, with signs. I am very surprised by that. <coughs> very surprised indeed. Uh, another lockup. Oh, it's Ocon, and he's now dropped in front of this pack. And Perez is going to sneak up the inside, or around, sorry, around the outside here. Potentially a Bottas and Leclerc. He's got Leclerc. Leclerc, huge loser in that. What about Bottas? Can he get Bottas as well? No, but Verstappen can. Move up alongside Ocon here. He's got the inside into this next couple of corners. And completes the move through turn eight. Oh, you can see the power of the uh, of the Red Bull in a straight line there. Slipstream and DRS, and all of a sudden Max is going to drop two places. And Perez just 
comes from nowhere to potentially get himself up three spots. He's got past Bottas. He's got past his teammate. He's side by side with uh, with uh, Ocon here. Can't quite complete the move. Has to drop back in. Now Max is snapping at his heels again. We've seen all sorts of great racing like this throughout the season. And it's great to see this continuing here as well. Oh, and that's a crash. I heard the impact. That's Magnussen. Who did he hit? Was it Albon? Let's have a look. Now just focus on the hat. Yes, it was Albon. Oh. That is a serious collision. I thought for a minute we were getting a safety car. How bad is the damage to Magnuson? He's lost his end plates on both sides of his wing. Albon, no visible signs of damage, but uh, he might have some suspension or chassis damage. Rear wing looks intact, but you never know. Magnussen into the pits as a result of that. Uh, Gasly is now fully charged. That gap's come right down. And there is the wet weather warning. We are three, four laps away from our predicted stop. Charge off. Norris is actually inside the second now. Hopefully I've got enough tyres left to just stretch that back out over a second again. Yep, there we go. Got to be careful now though. That gap closed up while I was watching what was going on behind us. A bit more than I, I thought it was. So the Red Bulls have suddenly gone from 13th and 14th, 10 laps ago, to now running 7th and 8th. They're looking a lot better off than they were just, just two or three laps ago. Sites using the DRS to close up to the back of Gasly. I really don't want to have to spend battery again. I mean, just charged it up. I'll wait till we make the pit stops and then use it there. Uh, double snack is the term Barrett. Yeah, I'm going to double stack them. I mean, it's not really technically going to be a double stack um, with a, a nine second gap. You know, double stacking is kind of more when there's like a, in this, when there's like a four or five second gap between them so that as one car finishes its pit stop and pulls out, the other one is pulling straight into the box. You know, if you can time it right, it's a beautiful thing. But, uh, with a, a nine and a half second gap, which will probably be closer to 10. Now that we're kind of scrapping with science and uh, Russell will be in and out of his box before Gasly gets anywhere near it. Okay, keep it clean, focus on the pace. Okay, so. 
This is potentially the lap that we're going to pit. I'm going to go ahead and schedule the pit stop. Good job, Pierre. And we'll be ready to just delay it by lap if we need to. We'll be boxing this lap. Yes, box. Box, box. And it is starting to rain. So I think by the time we get around, the AI will be stopping with us. So, given that, I'm going to use my battery here to try and make sure that we get track position on sites. I don't want to get drop, uh, get jumped in the pits. Uh, and there we go. It's now, yeah. Everyone's going to be boxing this lap. That rain came very quickly. You can see uh, Magnuson's already in the pits. He was obviously a way behind because uh, he had to pit for that new rear wing and that new front wing. We've got a little bit of a gap to uh, to sights, about half a second. That should be enough to get in and out ahead of him. He's going to be hitting his pit box before we hit ours because like we're down the other end of the pit lane. So there is a risk that he might jump us how good's our crew it's 2.5 we're being held for science are we going to get held for Norris as well we are damn it we've lost two places oh that's rough but not as rough as being Perez Bottas and Leclerc who are all going round for another lap okay Fernando has boxed Fernando has boxed So this is where things get very chaotic. I'm going to tell him to drive in clean air. Because hopefully that will be enough to enable me to just slide past these traffic jams of slower cars. Okay, that's good, Pierre. Very good. Didn't quite work out the way I wanted. Unfortunately. Very good. And there we go, we're through, but we've lost a fair bit of ground in the process. Okay, that's good, very good. So, Gasly having that's been comfortably in second, well I say comfortably, being, having been a second you know, about six tenths of a second ahead in second place is now over four seconds behind sights. Okay, we have both us in the pits right now. Let's see how quickly we can close up on Norris. We need to clear Norris and go onto sights as quick as we can. It's been a while, actually, since I looked at uh, Pierre's adaptability, so I'm not sure how good he is in the wet. But the biggest thing I've noticed with the adaptability is not so much inter conditions, it's when it's changing from inters to wets. When the, when the water gets to about 3 mil, that's when the adaptability really kicks in. Uh, and you'll see um, young rookie drivers will hold pace um, at a relatively consistent level till the rain hits about 3 mil, and then their pace will just plummet if they've got low adaptability. Until they get into the, like, the low fours you know, and get full wets on, and then it stabilizes again. But when you get that kind of crossover point, that's when adaptability really kicks in. And drivers with a low score there, just their pace just drops off massively compared to others. I'm 
All right. We need to force this overtake as quick as we can. Yeah, copy. No DRS anymore. That's been disabled with the weather. So this is going to be a straight overtake using battery. And there we go. We are through against Norris. And now we need to hunt down sights with five seconds off him. This one's good. No, not five. Three. Ah, the timing just went a bit weird there. It was 4.8, then it was 2.6, then it was 3.3 .3 seconds. Now it's 2.5. Yeah, the, the uh, split timings sometimes get very wonky on this circuit. And it's usually on the run into turn three there. Norris actually has the fastest lap. How did he sneak that? Unless it dries out again, he might keep that now for the rest of the race. Let's uh, let's take a look. What was the fastest lap and when did he set it? Lap 28, right before the rain. 107.7. Yeah, that's uh, a lot faster than we're managing right now. Uh, is it going to dry out enough? I don't think it is. It's going to be kind of just a bit iffy like this now for the next 20 laps or so. And then we'll get a good chunk of rain. But we'll probably stay as Inters. We should be able to make these tyres go to the end, but we'll see. Is Sight closing on Russell? No. Russell must have just had a bit of trouble getting past... Uh, Porsche and Stroll because he was 15 odd seconds ahead at one point but he's now 13 and a half but he is lapping faster by a couple of tenths so yeah he must have just lost some time trying to, when he was lapping Stroll and Porsche going to be in this weird little window for the next as I say 20 laps where it keeps dipping into dry conditions and then back into wet conditions by the look of the uh, prediction suppose we're going to have a dry track in about a minute but then it will start raining again or it'll it'll get wetter on track again I don't know if this is going to trigger the DRS at random points it might do Mick pointing in the wrong direction. It's just a yellow at the moment. Just a yellow. Uh, right it's turn four. Let's take a closer look. Let's have a look here. This was the Aston Martin. And that spin is undoubtedly going to cost them time. And positions.
We are slowly eking up onto the back of science, but it's very slow going. And the water level just creeping back up a little bit. That's good, that'll help cool the tyres down again. Increase the likelihood that they'll last the rest of the race. I mean, they're going to last, it's just what kind of condition they'll be in by the end. We are almost within a second. We won't get the DRS, but we will still get the slipstream. So what I want to do is when we get close enough, try and just charge up a little bit. Might have to do it in, in small chunks, depending on whether or not we start dropping back again. But going to need a, a, a little bit of battery to be able to punch our way past sites, I think. Yeah. Okay, who's that coming up in front? That's poor Cher. Make sure I stay close enough Keep to get the uh, slipstream on the straights. Okay. Charge on, charge on. Yeah. And we're at half distance. Watch for fuel. Just over half distance. Okay, another lap of that. Just getting that little bit of extra battery saved. And then we should have enough to get close enough to try and out accelerate the sights, probably on the run between turn three and four. Okay, charge on. Maybe, depending on what goes on here with Porsche Air, we might actually be able to capitalise on this. Okay, we need some deploy. Copy. Or at the very least, make sure we don't get hung up behind him. Okay, we've got the inside. And we complete the move coming out of turn eight. Very okay. nice. Sights hanging on in there. And there's an overtake from Williams. But we should 
be able to just eek away from him now by an extra tenth or so a lap. With no DRS, he is going to struggle on the back half of the lap to stay with us. But he will be a threat in the first half. These long straights with the slipstream. Got to be wary he doesn't try and throw it up the inside into turn three or turn four. We might not have enough pace to, to pull away. We might just, you know, eke out a couple of tenths in the, in the third, second or third sectors, only for him to pull it back in the first sector. So you can see it's the second half of the lap where we definitely have the advantage. Our car is incredibly good in the high speed stuff. But that slipstream is powerful on these long straights and you'll see sights start to close back up again. Hopefully we can minimize how much he closes up in this first part of the lap and then pull away more in the second half and make a net gain of a tenth or two a lap to the point where Sykes won't actually be able to stay with us. We can get it so he's not getting our slipstream. In fact, let's try and increase our chance of that happening. Okay. Use what little battery we've got left. now we're eating into the, the rest of the budget for this lap so when it comes to the uh, the third sector we'll have no battery left but if it keeps us pulling away from sites I'm happy for that because we should have enough okay, natural pace yep. in that third sector to keep the gap at around about a second that's what we need Because then we should be able to drop him. In theory. So we are hurting without the uh, the DRS, but it's all fast stuff. Where our car is good, so. There we go. We've got a 1.1 second lead across the line. Let's see if we can increase that over the course of the lap. Russell absolutely cruising. 15 and a half seconds ahead. Sight's still getting a little bit of a toe. Just don't quite have enough battery to be able to try and break that, unfortunately. That's a shame. But we are comfortably pulling away from Norris right now.
yeah we're not gonna be able to break sights so let's charge up fully charge while we've got track button. position and then just spend a couple of laps sprinting we can keep him behind not let him get ahead of us then we'll be able to break him when we do go for it The acceleration out of turn three where we're going to be vulnerable. So we're going to hold him off this lap. There we go. Oh, he's having a look. He's going to try and dive up the inside. We'll have the inside line for the next two turns. We should hold position. Let's have a look at the grid. Uh, Verstappen in seventh, right on the gearbox of Alonso. Perez in ninth, Leclerc eleventh, but it's close between Perez, Bottas, and Leclerc. Albon now down in twelfth, having been torpedoed by Magnussen, who has fought his way back up to fourteenth. Someone has locked up. I'm not sure who. It's Magnussen. <laughs> Speak of the devil. All eyes on Kevin Magnussen here. That lockup could have cost them dearly. Oh, he pulled on the track right in front of us. That could have been really bad. But uh, looks like we got through. No. No. We can take a look now. There's another lockup. Science hits us. Well, Science has just ruined his race because he's got to change his front wing. But well, how much damage has that done to us? Team are really disappointed with uh, it's knackered our tyres. We have to pit for tyres. Let's take a look at the another look at that. Okay, here's the Ferrari. Yeah, That's Science has lost his entire goal. front wing, well, so uh, he's going to be really slow. He's also going to get a penalty. Oh, and there's uh, Yuki locking up on turn four. Right in front of us. Yes, there. That's the lockup. Right, let's go ahead and, and see what else have we got damage wise. Um, yeah, minor rear wing damage, minor suspension damage. Uh, we're going to have to limp the car. Yep, fine. So we're going to lose a fair bit of tr uh, track time here. We're going to have to uh, work hard to regain some of those positions. But we will have much fresher tyres. Well, I say much better, fresher. We'll have fresher tyres. About 15% extra grip. It will stand us in better stead at the end of the session, though, at the end of the race. But on a track where speed is all important and we're already running a little bit of a, a deficit in acceleration plus you know 11th in top speed overall to now have rear wing damage and suspension damage that's going to hurt yeah, us in the corners yeah,
You can see there, we couldn't actually get back past Ocon without using battery. And even using the battery, we still have yet to actually make the move, I think. I think we might struggle to, uh, to get a 1-2 here. I, I think the damage to Gasly's car might do enough to take a bit too much pace out of them. He's got that move done. Let's have another look at the damage. So the ERS is at 38%. That's already affecting our acceleration. You can see we still haven't completed the move, even using battery. There we go. And then looking at the aero, the rear wing. Okay, that's good. Oops. Yeah, very good. The rear wing damage is going to affect our uh, acceleration. Sorry, our cornering speed and the suspension is also going to affect our acceleration as well, our cornering speed. So yeah, we're in uh, we're in a little bit of a hurt at the moment. Uh, we are 16 seconds off Norris right now. That's a big gap to close up in 20. 22 and a half laps especially when we haven't really got any battery to spend all right so this lap is a little invalidated time wise because we've used some uh, ERS so uh, some D uh, yeah ERS so let's see what we do lap time wise on this lap and that'll give us an idea as to where we might be able to finish so, uh, Russell's doing a 110.2. And uh, Gasly was lapping pretty similar pace. He would have been doing like a 110.3. Let's see uh, what he can do this lap with clean air. Fresher tyres, but with damage. We need to be doing a 110-0, really. If we want to have any chance of trying to close that gap down. We certainly need to be doing um, a 110-0 if we want to get past the snap and Alonso. I, I still think Norris is out of reach. but And maybe Ricardo as well. But Alonso... I know Ricardo is... Uh, just ahead of Alonso. We did a 199. So, yeah, he is... He's on it. So is everyone else. With those fresher tyres, we should be going faster than that. Um, I don't really want to burn the tyres up just yet. Someone has spun. A yellow flag, single it's Perez. That's behind us. So, so that doesn't Sergio help us. What a spin out. six so we're only three tenths of a second faster than the cars we're chasing so <sighs> on that pace we're only just about going to get up to the back of a snap and let's take a look at tyre wear everyone's tyres are going to go to the end Yeah, I think Gasly's going to be lucky to get fifth at this rate. I might have to push those tyres a bit.
feedback on conditions. People are talking about dry now. We are close to dry. Copy. Sainz now down in 14th, a lap down after serving a penalty and then changing his front wing. Yeah, we are just not closing at all. Verstappen's up to fourth. Verstappen, having started, what, down in, what, 14th? 13th, 14th, might end up on the podium here. There's only a second, and just over a second off Ricardo. Let's see what happens when the rain comes in the next, next few minutes. The track's going to get wetter again. Keep an eye on the fuel, please. Copy. We are now starting to eke away from Ocon. We've got the gap over a second. And there we go. Half a second gained on Alonso. Still not enough. Well, it's enough to catch Alonso at half a second, but Gamble on a set of wets, I, it's not going to be full wet weather. That's going to be Inters all the way through. If it does go wet, it'll be very, very brief. You know, a lap, maybe two laps. Wets would absolutely kill us. As it stands, we're going to get some points for Gasly. Um, but, uh, yeah, we were on for a comfortable 1-2, and uh, we're not even going to get Gasly onto the podium, unless something happens. Who knows? A safety car could happen, and then we're in really good shape. Because we'll be able to recharge that battery, save some fuel, we'll have fresh, fresher tyres in the cars in front, and we'll be able to just push hard until the checkered flag. Someone's locked up. Yeah, it's Albon Here's that's behind replay. us again. We now need people in front Here's to make mistakes. It's a lockup, and that could be costly. I think it's time. Let's go for a push. Okay. Time to start burning that extra grip that we've got. Another mistake, and it's Perez again. It's behind us. It's not what we need. We need someone behind, in front of us, to have a, a big wobble. That's another lockup. 
that's uh, <laughs> Schumacher again does not help us locking up on turn one it says turn 10 but it's not that's turn 10 that we've just gone through alright only four tenths of a second gained that's not enough We're riding on board with Ricardo, looking back at Verstappen right behind him. There is a little bit of a gap to Alonso. Alonso is our target for the rest of the race. I think that's as good as we're going to get. Uh, again, four tenths of a second. It's not enough. Got some back markers coming up as well. Porsche and uh, Stroll sitting right behind uh, Alonso. And they're in their own little battle, which is also <laughs> a bit of a worry. Okay, there we go, it's a bit more like it, that's seven tenths. Need a few more laps like that. Need these guys to peel out the way quickly. Cannot afford to get held up here. It's not even two millimeters of rain, look. I think this is about as wet as it's going to get. The wetter, the better at this point. Close to having a little bit of fuel to play about with. Almost a second on Alonso there. As the track gets wetter, these inters start performing better, and then the pace or the grip advantage that we have really starts to come to the f to, to the fore. But as the track dries up again, that uh, extra grip that we've got becomes negligible. We need it to be around 2 mil to really start reeling in Alonso and then maybe we might even be able to try and make a, a push for Verstappen and Ricardo as well. But Might get a little bit more rain in a few minutes. Might start uh, pushing it back up towards 2 mil again.
straw needs to get out of the way nice and quickly for us here. Thank you. There we go, we've got some rain coming. That is excellent news. The track is getting wetter. Keep going. Two, two and a half mil, I'd be very happy with that. That's two mil. down to just uh, one and a half seconds now so we're going to get Alonso and there's only another second and a half to Verstappen and, and Ricardo. it's not out of the out, out of the question that we might still be able to sneak onto the podium It'd be a hell of a drive to bring this uh, injured car home oh and there goes Ricardo into the gravel That's one less car to worry about. Let's have a look. Now, just watch the Mercedes here. And yes, under pressure from Max, he locks up into the gravel. And the team had such high hopes today. And that's a podium a gone for Mercedes. And we are now inside a second with, with, with Alonso. I don't have any battery to push with. Charge on. Charge on for now. And there's Verstappen. The podium is still on if we can get Alonso on the next lap. That will give us a couple of laps to get on the back of Verstappen. And then a couple of laps to try and get past him. Is he going to go for a lunge up the inside? No. He's going to think better of it. And this is where we're going to try and get Alonso coming out of turn three. Okay. Just a little bit too far back. Can we get him here? Up the inside, we got him. Now we've got to push. We've got nothing left to push with. We're pushing with everything we've got. And there's an overtake from Williams. We did a 1088 with that DRS deployment. I'm oh, sorry, ERS deployment. Uh, we can get on the back of him. Can we pass him? We 
we've got 10% extra grip on our tyres compared to him, but we are going to be burning that very quickly. Yellow flag is sector 3. Don't know who that's for. Vettel. Seven and a half laps left for Gasly. We're inside a second. The track is drying up again. That's not ideal. Let the tyres breathe for a, a moment. Ooh, are we going to get DRS here? Charge off. Copy. Yes, we are. No, oh, we can't squeeze through. And there goes the uh, DRS turned off again. Okay, charge on, charge it's not the end of the world. The track is getting wetter again. That will help us with the extra grip that we have. Here we go. Got a clean run up the inside of Max. And we're back on the podium. Okay, good job, thank you. We need a little bit I don't think we've got enough pace to get Norris. He's four okay. seconds up the road. And he is lapping about the same pace as Russell. So yeah, we're not going to catch Norris, but get back on the podium after getting clobbered by Sainz having to make a pit stop and nurse an, a damaged car for some 20 something laps that is impressive that's why he's world champion although uh, <laughs> the way his look's been going this season he won't be by the end of the season, George is going to take that from him. Expensive on replacement parts? Nah, it's not that bad. Four laps remaining. Come on. We've got parts in reserve and then, you know, on normal manufacturing, they're not that expensive. For all the tyres? No, I'm not going to push. Um, now that I've got the position because that's just asking for a lockup or a run wide and lose the position I'm going to keep it on this level of push and, and no higher And that's only because we've got damage, otherwise I wouldn't even do that. Another lockup. Don't know who that is. I think there's been a lock -up. It's Vettel again. I was going to say, we are suddenly closing in on Norris. 
Track is getting wetter again, mate. Oh, do I gamble? Three laps left. I don't think I'm lapping fast enough to to get him. And like I said, I don't want to... I don't want to take that risk and throw away what we've got. Nor oh. Norris has gone wide. We can take a look now. This what is what happens when you start pushing. If things like that happen. I can't believe we're actually on the cusp of getting a 1-2. the inside again beautiful he's been so good at that this uh, this Grand Prix <laughs> what a comeback You're doing a good job. Oof. I just I never thought we would get back up to second I really I didn't even think we'd get on the podium at one point we just didn't have any pace. And then the rest of the field started slowing a little bit. The, the water came back on the track, which helped us. We had uh, Ricardo throw himself off in, into the gravel. Norris running very wide. It's just, it's all come up Gasly. And now we just need to... Uh, Last lap. Hold it together for a lap and a half. I honestly can't believe we're going to pull this off. Kind of feel sorry for Norris. He's driven a fantastic race, but he's still on the podium. <laughs> Everything's coming up Millhouse. I'm going to get any last lap heroics from Max. Okay, that's the checkered flag. Russell wins. Fantastic work. Well done. Let's see what happened there. And coming in first, it's George Russell. <laughs> You're AFK for three minutes. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm in second. That's Russell crossing the line. What's that, win number four for him now? Win number four, win number five, maybe? Round the last corner. And what a fight back from Gasly to take second and a 1-2 that was looking impossible just 10 laps ago. Five laps ago it was looking impossible. Norris holds on for third and gets a podium, a huge result for McLaren. Given teammate Yuki all the way down in 16th. And here 
here today, George Russell making British motorsport proud. A spot on the podium is exactly what the team deserved, and they got it. I was looking a bit grumpy. And right now, it's the British driver who proudly. There takes we go. There's the some podium. smiles. And after all that hard work, surely it's time for them to enjoy this moment. A very impressive showing today for Williams. It's really wonderful to see all the hard work they've been putting in paying off like this. After an intense weekend, the team ends in first place in the constructor standings. As we reach mid-season, the battle will pick up again in the Côte d'Azur. Join us in the south of France at the circuit, Paul Ricard. What a comeback. Whew. Eight places gained from where he started, but it's more it's more like 16, 17 <laughs> places gained, you know, given the damage. Maybe not 16, but more like 14 places gained, I think. Because we came back what in what sixth, seventh, I think it was, seventh, uh, after the pit stop. Uh, good result for Max, fighting his way up from 14th to, to fourth. Uh, Lando just hanging on in the end manages to uh, to claim that podium uh, don't think he'd have been able to stay up there or fight his way up there if he hadn't started you know you know up nice and high but uh, a great drive from him nonetheless uh, some good results for Alonso Leclerc recovers a bit Bottas and Perez with some recovery as well uh, bad race for Albon uh, taken out by uh, Magnussen, uh, who also dropped a load of places. Uh, Sainz, who uh, who hit Gasly, broke his front wing and then had to serve a penalty while changing his, his front wing as well. Drops all the way down to 13th. Uh, good result for Vettel, despite spinning twice in the closing stages of the Grand Prix. Still managed to gain four places. Uh, Joe, starting from the back, climbs up to 14th. Uh, Schumacher had a, a, another race to forget, dropping all the way down to 17th. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, bit of a mixed bag for, for drivers up and down the grid. In the, in the Drivers' Championship, that is win number five now for George Russell. Uh, that is uh, one win more than his teammate, two podiums more than his teammate, uh, and uh, two wins on the bounce uh, in response to Pierre getting two wins on the bounce. So that gap now back up to 26 points again. It is a lot of give and take between the two of them. Uh, it's a lot of back and forth. Who knows what's going to happen uh, as we go to Pierre's home race next. Uh, Sainz with no points scored is now just one point ahead of Max who uh, picks up a big chunk and closes that gap quite substantially uh, Leclerc despite dropping down a position also closes the gap on his teammate uh, as does Bottas also again dropping a place on the grid to Max uh, or in the table to Max but again two point, points closer to Sainz so we've got a real big four-way battle here for third uh, between those four drivers uh, Perez and Ocon now level on points after another disappointing race for, for Perez he's had a few of those this season and look at that for Russell jumping all the way up one spot after <laughs> uh, after that fantastic drive gotta feel sorry for him he did get the fastest lap as well uh, Alonso with a nice big points return let's take a look at what that's done to the constructors Another maximum, well, maximum minus the fastest lap for Williams. 43 points. Uh, our lead pretty much looking like, you know, the writing's on the wall for, for, for Ferrari. This Constructors' Championship is pretty much over already. Um, 
Ferrari only getting the four points. That has allowed Rebel to close the gap a bit. Uh, Mercedes also closed the gap a little bit, but I think Ferrari is still probably going to get second. Uh, and then, you know, a big chunk of points from McLaren moves them up two spots. They are now above Haas and above uh, uh, Alfa Romeo and Aston Martin. Um, Aston Martin dropping two places with that poor showing from Schumacher, who was running in the points uh, for for a good for a good while before locking up in the gravel and then just dropping right down the order. He had a couple of spins as well. So yeah, some interesting uh, interesting results up and down the grid. No points earned for our drivers in terms of uh, XP points. Uh, an impressive race for George. Didn't really have anything to do. He just drove off into the distance. No overtakes, no defences of any kind. You know, successful or failed. He just started in first and gone. That was it. <laughs> That's not surprising. He didn't rack up a huge number of points there. Uh, as for Pierre... 21 overtakes, 7 defences, 11 failed overtakes, 5 failed defences. Very busy afternoon for him in comparison to his teammate who just literally just never ever, you know, lost the lead. Just uh, imperious. So, despite all the uh, the problems we did manage to, uh, to keep our uh, finish position streak alive and... Uh, keep our uh, um, our finish position, yeah. Keep our finish position uh, guarantees alive as well. Uh, we did lose a bit in terms of the incentives. We didn't get the fastest lap. Norris stole that from us right as the rain started to fall. Uh, we also didn't get the one-two in quali because I messed up and sent <laughs> sent uh, our drivers out too late. Just managed to sneak George over the line. The start a lap couldn't quite do it for for, for Pierre, so he qualified tenth, uh, and of course that meant we lost the quality streak. But we still come out with four and a half mil, which some of which is going to get spent on new parts. We've got the F1 in schools world finals. Uh, we will attend that. I think it's only fair. You know, it's uh, reigning constructors champions. That would be a huge treat for those uh, those kids. Congratulations from the board. Very, very happy. Sporting regulation changes. So here we go. Uh, F1 seasons are so often defined by their climactic battles between heated rivals. To encourage more of this, we propose that the final race of the season should be awarded double points. I am not a fan of double points. Um, so I am going to vote against that. I I didn't like it in the one season it existed. I thought it was a terrible gimmick. Um, and uh, I'm glad it only lasted that one year. Here we go. That's our inbox dealt with. Let's take a look at our car spare parts situation now. Uh, so... Uh, we have two suspensions in stock and two rear wings in stock, so we definitely need some no uh, some new uh, parts. What have we got in development? A side pods, front wing, and underfloor. So nothing coming to replace suspension or rear wing. So let's go ahead and manufacture a couple of spares. I don't think we're going to make any more suspensions this season, so I'm going to go ahead and make two. Uh, those will both drop before France and rear wings these aren't that expensive to make and they're pretty quick to make as well I'm going to go ahead and make two more of those as well so we've got two spares that should be all we'll need for the rest of the season unless we make another one um, I don't think I'm going to make another new rear wing we'll see I do need to work on the straight line speed a little bit so we've got 11 days to the next Grand Prix and 11 days to the new side pods. 
so that's where we are going to leave it for tonight in terms of our Williams save. We'll be back with Williams on Friday as we head to Paul Ricard for Gasly's home Grand Prix and our engine supplier Renault, uh, their home Grand Prix as well. Uh, tomorrow we'll be back with uh, the Challenge Mode series with Aston Martin. Uh, I'm trying to remember where we're going in that. Where did we race last? I can't remember. I think it was Jeddah, wasn't it? Or was it Aust Was it Jeddah? I don't know. But we'll find out tomorrow. So, um, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow with uh, Challenge Mode. Don't forget, as always, the new start time is going to be 9 p.m. UK time. Uh, so uh, uh, don't forget to, uh, to turn in uh, a little bit earlier than you have been in the past. And uh, I will see you all again very soon.